Hello, I am Guy Lewis Frechette. The purpose of this video is to explain in detail and in very simplistic terms the scientific basis for same-sex attraction. Welcome to Sexual Orientation 101, How People Become Gay. If we really want to know how people get to be gay, we need to look at three things, genetics, classical conditioning, and operant conditioning. It is difficult to explain sexual orientation with genetics because that would mean identical twins would always have the same sexual orientation. They don't. We have conducted thousands of scientific studies on twins, genes, chromosomes, hormones, brain structure, uterine environments, etc., etc., etc. They all have the same conclusion. Genetic factors are insufficient explanation of the development of sexual orientation. In fact, in scientific terms, assuming a cause and effect relation where none exist is the very definition of a superstition. So why do we think people are born gay? It probably has to do with our autonomic nervous system that part of us that automatically regulates internal body functions like heart rate, body temperature, digestion, and sexual arousal. Since we can't alter these at will, we simply choose to believe we were born that way. And it does make some sense. If I was to ask you right now to lower your heart rate, start drooling, or alter your sexual arousal level, you probably couldn't do it on command but you could be taught to do it on command, and that would require classical conditioning. There is a lot of scientific evidence that classical and operant conditioning is the source of sexual orientation. Classical conditioning easily explains how we become erotically attracted to the same sex. Operant conditioning easily explains how we become tolerant or intolerant of same-sex attraction. Classical conditioning happens when a sexual stimulus is paired with chemical combinations in the body. After several pairings, the stimulus will actually produce the same chemical response. These chemicals are mostly hormones, pheromones, and adrenaline, but also include other chemicals that affect our pleasure centers and produce emotional states. A stimulus can be physical, like kissing or having sex. A stimulus can be visual, like watching porn or oogling bodies in the locker room. A stimulus can be imaginary, like daydreaming about kissing or having sex. Classical conditioning usually happens when the body chemicals begin to surge in response to puberty. If this chemical surge coincides with a sexual stimulus, Eventually, the stimulus will produce the same chemical surge and emotional state. With a little practice, we learn how different stimulus combinations can amplify and fine-tune the chemical combinations. We learn to produce different emotional states like sexual arousal, climax, afterglow. These are what is known as conditioned emotional responses. But when we go extended periods of time without the stimuli, our chemicals dissipate and we lose that emotional connection with our pleasure centers. Like any drug addict, we go into chemical withdrawal. Our bodies will crave the drug and we will be drawn to the source of the drug and thus become attracted to the sexual stimulus. According to scientific research, this is how all erotic attraction is formed. Since nearly all sexual stimuli is masculine or feminine in nature, we are all conditioned to be erotically attracted to males or females regardless of our gender. How comfortable we are with these attractions is operantly conditioned. Specifically, operant conditioning teaches us a value system for same-sex attraction, and perhaps more importantly, a level of openness to personal experimentation. Operant conditioning happens when we seek out social stimuli that changes our ideology. Social stimuli are fun and exciting people, associations, and media. People like a friend or sibling. 
Associations like family, school, church, or the Gay Straight Alliance. Media like Facebook, Twitter, TV, Netflix, and YouTube. Basically anything on a screen. Everyone wants to have a best friend or soulmate. We all want to be comfortable in a group just by being ourselves. And it doesn't hurt to be fashionable, trendy, and envied. Our natural response to all positive social stimuli is social bonding. All positive social stimuli have two things in common. One, an attraction of social intimacy. Two, an ideology. To achieve social intimacy, we emulate our stimuli. The more we emulate, the more we acquire a sense of being loved, a sense of belonging, and a sense of being admired. But we really can't have a soulmate if we have different values. And we cannot really be part of a group that has different values. And nobody is going to follow us on social media if we think too differently. Thus, consciously or subconsciously, we also emulate their ideology. The more we absorb their ideology, the deeper the social intimacy. In fact, similar ideology is necessary to feel loved, belonging, and admired. In short, every stimulus is like a commercial. They all have something we desire, but they all have something to sell. As a result, Depending upon our exposure, we all end up somewhere on a scale of sexual values. On the lower end of the scale, our sexual values are intolerant and rigid. In the mid-range, we become tolerant but remain rigid. In the upper range, we are tolerant and fluid. The higher we are on the scale, the more likely we are to experiment outside traditional heterosexuality. And the more we experiment, the more likely we are to classically condition same-sex attraction. And that is the real story, the truth of how people become gay. In summary, no one is born gay. Everyone's sexual orientation is classically conditioned. Our tolerance is determined by social exposure. If you have questions, do some research. I recommend you start with Google Scholar and read the actual studies. If you would like to discuss, promote, or follow, I am easy to find. This is a GLF production, no rights reserved, which means it can be passed around freely and used for educational purposes.